So welcome back. What we're going to do now is put the all the main bearings in for the crankshaft. Got them all laid out nicely on the table here. New ones, that's the thrust one. There's only one thrust one and it's a solid thrust on this one. Some of them like the 2140 block. If you remember, these bits are separate, but that's all one piece. I have cleaned all of these off with diesel. I've cleaned in here so best I can. What you want to also do is make sure that the little jets, those, there's another hole for the piston cooling, I think they are, piston cooling jets. Make sure all those are clean because one of them, uh, this one was blocked. Hang on a minute. There we go, I'll tip you up. That one was blocked, so I had to take that one out and stick a load of stuff in it to get it to move. But yeah, we're ready. Ready for the crank now, basically. That's the next step. I've also cleaned off all the gasket surfaces, either end and the sump. So, I shall set you up and put that in. So, that's your main end. It's obviously got the oil groove in the middle. And if you can see, the tang in there has to line up with the tang in the block. So that's just a case. Dropping them in. Making sure everything lines up nicely. And do that seven times. There's seven of these. And then one of the main thrust ones right down that end. Which is at the f that's at the back of the engine, that one. This is the front, that's the back. Don't need to worry about putting oil between the thing and the block because you don't want it to spin. Which if you remember at the beginning when we took it all apart was my main concern was that it spun but it hasn't so that's very good. These are oh, what are they plus or minus 10 thou, whichever way it is. I'm guessing it's yeah, be plus, wouldn't it? Or minus, I don't know. End one. Exactly the same. It just slots right in there. Right in there. And now what we'll do is drop a boil on them all. Says in the book of film foil. Uh, you could use assembly lube, but I spoke to the old boy at Barham Engines and uh, old boy John, who I do all my dealings with when it comes to older stuff. He said not to worry, just put engine oil in, which this is engine oil. Make sure that's got a nice film on those. So that's the block ready. What we'll do is bring the crank shaft over. Still got a little bit of cleaning to do, but let's just blow it out and then we can drop it in. God, bloody hell, this thing's heavy. That's that, made that <sighs> twice as heavy now. Cool, that. There are still the odd mark on the mains, but you can't catch them with your finger. That's one thing. One thing John pointed out when they ground it, but he says all the marks are in the middle. So obviously this is the oil groove. All the marks are in the middle, so should be all hey ho, pip and dandy, basically. Okay, so now that's in, that big lump. 
it's the main caps with the end shells in the mains as well in the main caps same again just drop them in and then this little tang here it has to line up with that one there so that will drop in like that and then do that again for the whole lot if the bleak bolt will go in yeah, do that right the way along and then we'll torque them down uh, they're all in all the top caps are in as well the obviously the shims on the inside I've finger tightened all of them this one I have literally just torqued down 120 Newton meters so obviously I don't need to do that one because it's tight And then all the time after you've done each one, just make sure it spins freely. Because if it doesn't, something is binding somewhere. And you'll be in a world of problems. I literally just didn't do what I was supposed to do. Right there. Yeah, that spins freely still. So there, that's the crank in. It spins nicely, you don't want to spin it too much, but not under any load so it shouldn't really matter that much now if you wanted to you could put the front timing cover on and the back plate and put it in the back in the tractor which I'm half tempted to do because it's gonna get very heavy this engine in a minute because you think we've got six six connected rods to put in, six pistons then the back plate and the front plate which are here, back plate and the, the back timing from that will go in so it's going to add a lot of weight to it and obviously the clutch has to go on before you put it on as well still need to get that one looked at by small ridges actually I might have to do that maybe this afternoon or whatever but yeah that's the cranking so far I'm quite pleased with that love it when a plan comes together but yeah next step I don't know but you'll see in a minute so next step new piston new rings now they have a handy little guide to tell you which where the pistons go so that one's the top middle no yeah bottom middle top and it says or all of them which is very handy from vapomatic so what we'll do start with the bottom one which that i believe is the oil control ring because it's got the spring in it now do i be brave Well, if that comes out of there, you get that out of there, slide that down to its respective groove. This isn't the right way to do it, I don't think. It might be, I don't know. I think these are... Yeah, I think... I don't think it matters which way that one goes. I think I'll be very careful with this because it's a cast, cast piston ring. Try and put it round, and there we go. 
that is that positioned. Rings in the grooves. Permissible valve groove where is a problem and a point one. Right. Well, that's a oh, that's a new, new now broken piston. But surely, if it's a piston kit, they would have measured it first. That's always my argument for it. But so this is the second one. Now, this one has an odd shape. So in the Vapormatic kit, they do have it stamped on the rings which way up it should be. I didn't realise this until a bit later on when I'm putting these piston rings on, but it is stamped in them, so excuse any misinformation from my front. Ah, oh, it's stamped in it. Then that's helpful. God, Vapormatic have thought of everything when it comes to these. Put these on, I must take the gloves off actually. Probably people wincing in the comments about this. God. Oh, you yeah, bastard. There we go. So there, and then obviously you want to set your piston ring gaps all different, so one round here, one round here, and one there. But that's all the rings on a piston, basically. Connecting rod, new gudgeon pin, and apparently the correct amount of wear. There we go. That is the correct amount of wear or correct setting for a piston gudgeon pin is that it falls under its own weight. So that is just about perfect. So that'll go on there, bung it in the engine, fire it up, jobs of fish. Now the piston and the connecting rod are directional, but it's stamped front on there, and then the top of the piston has an arrow on it that side. So if we have all of those facing that way, that'll be the right way. So then just put that in there. Right in there like that. That's the top, that's the front. And then just slide the pin. Slide the pin through. And then you'll have a circlip. Circlip either side. We all know how circlips work. And that's a complete piston and connecting rod. So now I just need to wait for my piston ring compressor tool to come and we can whack them in job done right so it's probably a week or two later from the last bit of recording I did but I'm going to set the piston rings and put them in so the oil control ring needs to be above the gudgeon pin and then the other two it says in the book need to be 120 degrees this way and that way so because you don't want them in all the same place because you'll just get horrific blow by and no power and everybody loves speed and power so those are about right then you want to smear it in oil smear the bore in oil which i will do in just a moment there is actually quite a lot of oil in the bore anyway i did that to stop it rusting because it does just seem that the water when I'll say water, the moisture in the atmosphere then at the moment is horrendous. Everything here gets soaked all the time. Somebody in one of the past videos said clean your shop. It's like, well, that's the least of my worries at the moment, really. And while you're, while you're putting oil on it, try not to move the rings around too much because would be a bloody nightmare and the arrow on top of the piston needs to face the front so I'll just make sure that's there it was there it was there where's the other one 
And then, piston ring compressor tool, Halford's finest. This will fit. Should do anyway. On. So over the rings, like that. Wind it up. Make sure you've got them all. And a lot of times, the washers are in the way. There we go. Wind that up. Be careful not to slice your finger because this thing is lethal for that. Rubber, not rubber, wooden end of the hammer and just. And that's in like that. Right, so this is the last one now. Given. If you can't hear me very well, it's probably because of the rain. Because it's not stopped raining since probably the middle of the summer. But just tapping this down now. The shell is in the bottom of this connecting rod as well. Just tap that down. Oh, there's a seat on there. Obviously there's a film of oil on that as well. And then we've got the shell in the bottom of this one. And then put the tangs, tangs together. Put a film of oil on the bolts as well. Put them in there. Oh, also, while I remember, when, when you're putting the main caps in for the crankshaft, I was told to use brand new bolts. So I've taken the old ones out and put new ones in. It's the same torque, it's just you've got to replace them every time. And new connecting rod bolts as well. And then torque them up to 65 newton meters. 65 or 63, which one, whichever one you like, it says mm, different in the book. I'm going for 64. Just go in the middle, why not? And there we go, that's that in. And then give it a spin. It will be a bit tight because of the piston rings, but it shouldn't be shouldn't be overly tight. Uh, it all spins spins freely. What's the next job now? I haven't got a clue what the next job is now, but it looks quite snazzy that. Whether we finish this here or not, I don't know whether that's the end of this video um, but in the next one I'm guessing we'll have to start putting the front plate and back plate on and, and uh, oh yes and once that's on once the front plate is on oh I've got you in a weird setting once that's on it'll be camshaft timing gears oil pump and all of that lovely stuff lifters in the top there but yeah for the minute if that is the end of this video thank you for watching if it's not cue me in a minute talking about something else <laughs>